a coming out does not have to be surprising to be meaningful. Hello there, folks. I am here to talk to you about Shudi Gatwa. And no, not for his part in a show that I'm not going to bring up because uh, unless I'm doing a review, I'm not going to talk about that show. But if you follow this channel, you know why Shudi Gatwa is on my radar. But he's known at this point for a number of things, including the biggest movie of the year. So he's doing quite well for himself. He had a cover shoot for Elle magazine as part of Elle's Style Awards, because Gatwa has uh, become fairly well known for his looks at things like red carpet events. He's quite hard to miss. And there were some really interesting things that were said inside of that Elle magazine, including his official coming out. Now, that might strike some people as confusing. I suspect a fair number of you who are aware of Gatwa assumed he was already out. Actually, that was such a broad assumption that I saw the uh, the fact that he was cast as a lead in a show that I talk about a lot touted as like being the first queer person in that part. I made a short at the time that I've now since unlisted because he has confirmed that he is not cis hetero and is therefore queer. We'll get into the specifics of what he said in a minute, but I did at the time put out a short saying, hey, um, he's actually gone way out of his way to not say how he identifies either in terms of gender or sexuality. So like, don't claim that he is this thing when he has very much not said that he is. He's never said that he's anything. Well, now he has, which is why I unlisted that short. It's no longer relevant. It's now completely outdated and uh, inaccurate for what we now know. Now, some people might be content to just file under the week's least surprising news. Shudi Gatwa is queer. Wow, I'm so shocked. Look at my shocked face. But the thing is, the fact that he came out at all, given how he has approached things up to this point, and some of the specific things that he said when he did so, I actually think are really worth talking about, particularly in light of some of the things that I touched on when I did a video um, a little while ago talking about the pressures that queer performers who are not comfortable being publicly out might feel to come out in order to avoid criticism of things like queer baiting. So if you want to see that video, it's there. And I even brought Gatwa up in that, though he was by no means the main focus. It's interesting to talk about a figure who has in no way ever really hid his queerness, but has also never really talked openly about it. And even here in this interview with Elle, he doesn't really, not fully. It gets mentioned almost as a passing detail later on. Now, mentioned in the article later on, whether or not it was said late into the interview, we actually don't know. It's perfectly possible for the journalist who actually wrote this up to put these in any order because it wasn't formatted as a question, answer, question, answer, question, answer interview. It was talking about sitting down and having the conversation. And so building a narrative, it's possible that he actually said this early on instead of saying it towards the end, like it's, oh, and by the way, you know, last thing. But that is how it is presented in the article. And we'll get to what he specifically said about his sense of queerness in a little bit. Um, this is where I will note if you take issue with that word, because I, I know some members of the LGBTQIA plus community do. Um, I'm using it because it's the word he used. I mean, it's a word I'm also comfortable with, but I do recognize at this point that it is not a universal word in terms of people's comfort level. And it's one that I'm very careful about applying to specific people unless I know that's a term they're comfortable using. And Gatwa has demonstrated that not only is he comfortable with it, it appears to be his preferred term. But again, we will come back to that. He talks a bit about his sense of fashion, saying flat out how empowering he feels a corset is. There's something about being in a corset that makes me feel so masculine. He talked about his view and approach towards gendered clothing and how 
He doesn't like labels. Clothes are to play with. I love seeing men in women's clothing. There doesn't need to be a label. I believe that fully. That's why I don't like to label myself, and I don't owe it to anyone. That quote actually feels a little bit pointed because he has avoided labels for himself up to this point, which might bring one to wonder why it is he does do eventually, and we will get to it, a confirmation of being queer in this article and in this conversation. And while I am trying very hard to not put my projected notions and thoughts into Gatwa's mouth or try and um, parse his thought process because I have no business doing that. I do think there is something that he says that gives an interesting context to why this might be the time that he chose to openly talk about this. And particularly, he brings up the character he was best known for before the more recent stuff he was cast in um, this year and last. And he talks about playing an openly queer character in what became a well-watched and well-regarded show. And having done that for as long as he did over the course of four seasons really seemed to bring to him the importance of representation. He's so fierce and unashamed. It was healing for me and great for people to see themselves represented. It taught me the importance of representation. It's so powerful and necessary. And that's interesting for him to talk about because earlier he talked about some of his own insecurities, about his sense of place just in general when he said this. Inside, it's such a mess. I have so much imposter syndrome. I have so many insecurities. I like to make other people feel happy so there's less focus on me. I become this loud figure that's cracking jokes all the time. It comes across as confidence, but at the heart of it, it's not. Real confidence is something I have to work on daily. So it doesn't seem unreasonable to assume, given these quotes, that playing that part and playing somebody so unabashed in who they are and not holding back for anybody gave him a sense of understanding of the importance of that and maybe gave him some more confidence by proxy in a way. Because what he describes, that's kind of low-key imposter syndrome, I actually kind of talked about a little bit myself fairly recently. Granted, I was talking about imposter syndrome mostly in terms of my work and what I do here, but I did in that video touch on the idea that it had leaked into my perception of myself as a queer person, as a trans person, that I shouldn't use certain labels because that doesn't feel like I'm deserving of those labels for one reason or another. Again, you can check out that video for more on that. But I think there's probably a little bit something else that drove his coming out because the interviewer brings up the idea, and I, I really want to be very clear, I don't think the interviewer was presenting this as something for him to address directly, but more talking about it as a thing that gets brought up when people who are not cisgender, white, heterosexual, able-bodied, and traditionally attractive get cast in major roles. There is often conversations about tokenism, about pandering to a certain kind of audience, about, as the um, interviewer put it, box ticking. And again, I don't think she brought that up because she was actually making the suggestion herself that Gatwa being cast in anything is some form of box ticking, but she did bring up the subject. And that seemed to spark actual anger in him. First of all, you don't know anything about me. Secondly, tick f***ing boxes. People need to be f***ing seen. What are you going to do? Tell the same stories? Have the same people fronting things for all of eternity? Representation and inclusivity and branching out. It enriches us all. How embarrassing. You people with your tiny mindsets. Open a book, look out the window, and then f*** off. Again, I don't mean to project, but I don't think it's an unfair assumption for me to put out there that he's probably been hearing some version of 
you were put in this part just to tick a box for his entire career and probably before because he was probably seeing those conversations happen around anyone else who diverged from those traits that I mentioned earlier, like him. So I suspect that that little outburst is kind of a long time coming. It's probably maybe not something that he's been repressing and holding back, but speaking as someone who has felt similar frustrations at hearing any instance of inclusion being immediately questioned and undermined and devalued and presented as if it has no inherent worth, it's just there to be forced diversity. It's an anger I understand very, very well, even though I cannot relate to all of it being a very white person as I am. I can still absolutely relate to what he said in that moment. A lot. But that brings us now, finally, to what he actually said that I would consider to be his coming out. He describes going to a Pride event and seeing a woman that looked like his auntie. Now, Gatwa is Scottish. He grew up there, but he was born in Rwanda, and he has ties and connections to that world, that culture, those people. And he was kind of shocked to see someone that looked so much like the people from his life. And he ended up striking up a conversation with her. And she confessed to him to not even be entirely sure why she was at the Pride event because she didn't, she had, she didn't have a label. But she just felt like she should be there even though she didn't really know why. And Gatwa shared this. I had never met another queer Rwandan person before. I thought I was the only one in the world. And again, not to project more meaning or a thought process that he may or may not have had, but I have to imagine that an experience like that of finding someone with a similar background to him who is queer was enough of an eye-opening moment that along with having played some of the parts that he's played, it shored up the importance of representation to him. I feel like that very much certainly comes across in the way the article is formatted. Again, I want to be careful about the narrative of the article versus actually assuming exactly what Gatwa's intent was, because ultimately, while this article is quoting him, it is not written by him. So I, I want to be careful about how I present all this. But then there's that word, queer. It is fascinating to me that Shudi Gatwa, a man who has just flatly never answered questions about his sexuality or gender identity prior to this, has come out with the broadest, most umbrella term available. Again, I know some people's discomfort with the word, but part of the value of queer, at least to me, is that it is broad. It is far-reaching. In many ways, it encompasses the entire community. And it does not require a more specific label if you either don't want to give it or aren't sure what it is yet. For a long time before I came out as gender fluid, before I found that term, I identified as a crossdresser, a cisgender crossdresser at that. I didn't feel like I was cisgender, but I didn't feel like I fit what I understood to be the definitions of trans. So when I found something that fit me, it meant a lot and I embraced it pretty quickly. But Despite the fact that I would present and talk about myself uh, as though I were just a crossdresser, that never fully felt right. It did a little bit in my early 20s, but as time went on, I'm like, this isn't right, but I can't find something else. And that's why terms like queer are so wonderful. I didn't know what I was for a long time, but I knew I wasn't straight. And I knew I wasn't cis. I knew I was queer. And while I just go with gender fluid now and it fits me very well, part of the beauty of queer 
is that it allows you to be able to say, whatever I am, whether it's a case of I don't know or it's shifting or I haven't settled and fully found myself or whether it's a matter of the specifics of my life are not your business, it at least enables you to say, okay, you know cisgender and heterosexual? heterosexual? Yeah, I'm not that. And that's enough. That's enough to be part of this community, to be a source of representation, to be queer. All you have to do is not be straight and cisgender. You don't have to know exactly what you are. Or even if you know, you don't have to tell people. Ultimately, it's not their business if they don't know you in a setting where it actually matters. And understand, those settings are few and far between. Unless you are trying to build an incredibly close and often intimate relationship with someone, ultimately, the specifics of their sexuality and gender identity are truly none of your business. And he has every right to keep those specifics to him, assuming that he knows what they are. He may not. He also might. Everything about how he has talked about this and that little outburst as well and bringing up the fact that stuff is not your business and I don't owe you the answers because he doesn't. But recognizing that he does not owe anybody, including, to be fair, the rest of the queer community, he does not owe us the details of his life and his identity. Him embracing the term queer is meaningful to us because of his prominence and just being visible. And even as he said, how important representation is. But we are not owed that information. But us not being owed that information does not mean that he also has to make some kind of principled stance of, I will never tell anybody. The decision to come out in any capacity in highly specific details or in broad overarching umbrella terms like queer, that decision lies only with the person whom is speaking about themselves. They are the only ones who have any business deciding what will be known about them. And if they say at some point, it's none of your business and I don't want to tell you, they're not obligated to keep that forever. They can decide later to give some information. They can decide to be specific. They can decide to be vague. But what I have found fascinating, encouraging, and inspiring about Gatwa coming out is he did not feel it necessary to lay bare his soul, his history, or his love life for the world to see, to pick over, to go, ooh, a public queer person, let's examine. No, you don't have any right to that. And in a time when queer people of all stripes are under massive scrutiny, it is so important to be reminded that we do not owe our lives and our information and our identity to other people. We definitely don't owe it to people who mean us harm. We don't even owe it to the rest of the community. We are who we are. The extent to which we are willing to share that is our prerogative alone. Some will be very, very open and very public, but not everyone has to be. And to have a prominent example of someone who is now out, but in the broadest possible sense, the way Gatwa is, I think that has real importance and real meaning because this is a reminder. You don't have to bear your soul in order to come out. It can feel like that regardless of how much you come out, but you are not required to share everything. He's not required, you're not required, no one is. The choice and the control to whatever extent you are able to hold on to should remain with you. And if you choose to come out, it gets to be your terms, your words, or at least it damn well should be. 
And that's why I can look at this article and read about Shudi Gatwa and feel nothing but warmth at reading this and at the tiny, broad glimpse that he saw fit to share with us. Welcome, Shudi Gatwa. You have been welcome in this community for a very long time, but I want to do so formally. Welcome to being queer. Obviously, you have been for some time, but welcome to owning the label. And to whatever comfort level you have, I hope that having done this and said this brings positivity and joy to your life. She said to someone who will never see this video, but I wanted to express my appreciation because this felt special. Even within the realm of established celebrities coming out, this feels special to me. And I wanted to talk about why. What are your thoughts on this? Whatever they are, be polite and drop them down in the comments and we will talk about it. Patreon pays the bills and enables me to do this as my living so that I can have these talks with you about these things. But even if you can't support me that way, there's links to other things that I do in the description, but don't worry too much about it. What I want you to remember more than anything, is that you are beautiful, you are valid, and you are loved. You are the council. I am just running the meetings, and until next time, this council is adjourned. Shout out to the patrons who helped make this possible. In particular, I want to thank Robin Moore, Zubin Lutfola, Goddess Elida, Tarak, the thing that goes doing to the anime, Ruth, Oliver B, Solitary Pictures, Ulrich Bogdan, Melinda Walters, Jen, Auntie Kate 808, Becky Sparks, Cronobilax the Poodle, Robin Powell, T Love, Tracy Scrabbit, Angry Casper, Dave Hall, and Rosalind Bennett. There's being able to hear me try and pronounce your name, plus a whole bunch of other rewards on the Patreon. You can check out the tiers, but um, if you're already on the list, thank you so much.